while you were shooting, mm -hmm. did you catch anything in the devices? And et, et la question qui la question qui suit, c'est comment vous vous êtes retrouvé simplement à, 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 à adapter un, une nouvelle de Sartre pour faire donc, euh, Childhood of a Leader Comment vous vous êtes retrouvé à faire ce, ce film C'est un choix étonnant. Il y a deux questions. Two questions. Um, so the first question is about... Uh, Did you learn tricks from the... Did I learn tricks from the... From the from the old masters, the new masters, the young, the young masters. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I did. I mean, I never like, I never like, you know, like sat down with a notepad and asked somebody for some advice. Um, but you know, it, it was comforting for me to see people that I admired a lot struggling uh, with the same things that I was struggling with, um, and made me feel like, okay, well, if they're struggling and they're getting it done. Um, then maybe I can get it done also. I think that, that, I think that was the, the most important thing. And then I think the other thing I took away from it is that there's not one way to bake a cake. I mean, all of those uh, filmmakers make movies in very, very different ways. Um, and so I felt comfortable to, to make mine in, 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 in my way. Alors oui, bien sûr que j'ai probablement retiré c'était comment parmi tous les choix possibles vous avez pris ce, ce roman yes so so um so it's actually it's sort of an interesting thing so i mean um 10 years ago i read a book by margaret mcmillan um who uh was a relative of churchill actually um And, uh, uh, and lectures at one of the big universities in Canada. Um, she wrote a book about uh, Paris 1919 and the seven months leading up to the signing of the Treaty of Versailles. Um, and I found the book really, really haunting, and I wanted to uh, make a movie uh, about uh, the, uh, the, the time and place and theme. Um, and, but I was a little bit nervous because, you know, there had been like a lot of PBS documentaries and stuff where people like, you know, reenacted Clemenceau and Wilson and stuff and it was quite absurd. And, uh, and so I was, I was scared of, of, of making a, a film that would be just sort of, uh, very didactic and not very poetic. Um, and so I had the idea of, of of making, telling a story about a boy who is sort of the physical manifestation of, uh, of the uh, flaws of, of this document or documents, many, many documents. Um, like a boy who is sort of possessed by the notions of the era um, and about how the era shapes this young man, like in some sort of metaphysical way. Um, and then, um, And then after uh, that, I had discovered uh, uh, an article that was entitled The Childhood of a Leader, um, that at that point I did not know was named after Sartre's uh, short story. And so then I, I, the, the title was really explicit and striking. And, um, and then, so, so basically I was thinking about taking this on as a title and then realized that, that there was, that there was <coughs> Sartre's short story. So then I picked up Sartre's short story and I read it, and um, and uh, and then at that point decided decided to fold in a few elements from that story into the script, um, but then there were references to Robert Musil and the confusions of young Torlis and all these things, and and basically the script became this sort of amalgamation of many many different works. Um, Uh, 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 throughout the 20th century that addressed uh, the theme of, or themes of tyranny in the 20th century. And, and so um, I thought uh, in the end that it would be smart to keep the title The Childhood of a Leader to sort of, uh, 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 you know, couch the film or, or contextualize the film in this sort of, uh, you know, 
uh, very existentialist, very stark sort of you know way, um, which is the way I wanted the movie to be per, you know received. Um, and so you know that that's a long summary of, of of a very complex process that you know that took ten years to to sort of develop. Because I think we're already a bit ahead. Euh, mais euh, c'est plus une remarque d'ailleurs, mais j'ai eu l'impression en voyant le film que cet enfant il vous ressemblait beaucoup. En tout cas, l'image que je me fais de vous à travers vos rôles, euh, c'est comme si voilà, c'était un, un petit Brady Corbett qui par ailleurs euh, a aussi une relation très forte avec sa mère qui est jouée par Bérénice Bejo. Mm -hmm. J'ai l'impression qu'il y avait quelque chose de très personnel euh, dans ce film. Est-ce que je me trompe Uh, yeah, no, it, it was personal. It was personal. I mean, the most personal part of uh, the process was that um, when making uh, making my 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 first uh, feature film, um, that I would uh, work with a child actor. You know, um, it's where I started, and so um, it was quite interesting to discover someone, and um, and Tom was quite a discovery. Uh, he'd never acted before. He had no interest in acting. Um, a casting assistant spotted him playing soccer in a playground, thought he was a little girl, and, uh, and, and realized that it was, uh, in fact, uh, a boy. Um, and I was looking for a little girl that, uh, looking for a little boy that looked like a little girl. And, and so um, that was that was sort of how it happened and then you know it's it's amazing because now this little boy is starring in two new films you know and it's like his whole life has changed so it's and he's got amazing parents so he's he's not going to he's not going to to, to turn into anything nasty it's actually really incredible um because he uh he uh uh, I, I, I think that, you know, whether he continues to act for the rest of his life or not um, is, is, is unimportant. I think it's just going to, to set him off on, on a very exciting path. And uh, I, I think he's, he's clever enough to know what to do with it.